Welcome to part three in this series of videos where we look at Blazor WebAssembly from a beginner's perspective. In this video, we'll look at adding Syncfusion controls. Controls are things like drop down lists, combo boxes, grids, etc. It's always easier to use a third party control than to try and program them oneself. The main reason I have selected Syncfusion controls is that for individuals and companies with an annual turnover of less than $1 million, you can use a community license that is completely free. And providing your turnover is less than $1 million, you can use them for commercial purposes. In addition, I have, for the main part, found the documentation to be helpful and the community forum has provided me with answers when I have run into trouble. Interestingly, the forum seems to be monitored closely by Syncfusion staff, who also seem to provide a lot of the answers. Anyway, let's look at installing the Blazor controls from Syncfusion. With Visual Studio 2022 open and with the project open, on the Solution Explorer, right click Blazor Countries WASM.client and select Manage NuGet Packages. Go to the Browse tab and search for Syncfusion Blazor. And we've got a number of packages that we need to install. Uh, the complete list of these I'll show on the screen in a second. Um, but what we'll do is I'll just install one. So select it and then select install. And we can now see that it's got the little green tick by it and it's implies it's installed because the option is to uninstall. I'll show you the list we've got to install and then I'll carry on and install those and come back to you when I've completed it. When they're all installed, just check by clicking on installed and just removing Blazor from there. And checking against the list. I think we've got them all there. If there are some there that we don't need, we could always delete them later. But there's one more that we need, and it's to do with the licensing. So go back to the browse and enter syncfusion.licensing. And we should find this package. So install that one. So we've installed the packages, but we're not home and dry yet. We've got some more setup to do. So close the NuGet Package Manager and select the underscore imports in the client project. And we're going to add some code here. This is basically a list of the individual Blazor components that we're going to be using. Uh, so with those in place, we can use them throughout the client uh, project. We also need to go to the program.cs again in the client project. And we need to enter a few lines in here. We need to enter a using statement saying using Syncfusion Blazor. Also in here, the builder services add Syncfusion Blazor. In the WW root folder, again of the client, we want to go to the index HTML and we need to add some a couple of lines in the the head section. So I'll just add those. So that will allow us to use Bootstrap 5. And that's a script uh, to allow us to use Syncfusion Blazor core scripts. So we've got the Syncfusion 
blazer controls added, but we need to license them. Now we've added the license NuGet package, but we still have a little way to go. So to get the license key, uh, go to the Syncfusion web page. And if you haven't already got one, uh, apply for a license and then sign in. And this is the page that will greet you once you've signed in. What we want is the downloads and keys. And we want get license key. Select the platform, which is basically just Blazor. And select the version. Now, I seem to recall that when we were loading, installing just now, we were installing the 24048 service pack. We can give the project a name, we don't have to. Then we click Get License Key. I'm going to do that off screen and copy it to a Notepad. So you'll join me again in a minute. Right, I've downloaded the license key. So back in Visual Studio, we need to go to Program CS. And after the using section, we need to add this. And that is the line that will provide the license. But where you've got your license key here, you'll need to replace that with the download key that you would have downloaded and copied to the clipboard. I will put my key in here and then close program.cs. Now, just to make sure things are still working, we'll now just run the application. And it's running and we can show the country list. Now, what we're going to be doing next this is just the simple table in HTML. We're going to replace this with a Syncfusion data grid. So let's close it and go back to the code. And I'll just close those. What we need to do is go to the country list page and we're going to re be replacing this table with a Syncfusion grid. So let me just delete that and replace it with this. So we've got a Syncfusion grid and the data sources countries, which we'll come to in a second. And we've got a section here marked columns and we've got the first column, uh, which is going to be the country ID. That's going to get the data. The header text is going to say country ID. It's going to be left aligned and the width is 20. Now you'll see here the width for the country name is 80. Those are just the percentages of the width of the screen that's available to us. So that's the um, effectively the, the, the HTML section or the replacement. And now we've got the code section, which replaces the uninitialized async with this line with this. So what we're doing is uh, declaring a, a, a list of countries and it's a new list of country, of type country. And then on the uninitialized async, we're awaiting the country service get countries, setting the countries to new. And then for each country in service countries, we're looping around adding the country. Let's run that and see what happens. So it runs. Let's try countries list. And we've successfully got our countries list. So that's it for this video. I'll put a list of interesting and helpful links in the description, and I'll also just display them before we finish this video. Thank you very much.